everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. Today I'm going to be sharing a pumpkin spice season project that I made with new Tim Holtz products, including his adorable Edison pumpkin set. I think this pumpkin is super cute and you can use him for a lot of different things. And as you can see, I've made some alterations to him to create a pumpkin holding a few coffee cups. We've got fall vibes going on in the background. And I think this is a really fun project for the fall season. To start off my project, I have the Edison pumpkin here and you can see there are multiple pieces that can be used to layer up to create this pumpkin. And one of the things that's really nice about these dies is that they're marked with the colors that you'll want to die cut them from, which is super helpful when picking out your colors. So I'm going to go ahead and use those as a guide to be able to pick out the colors that I'm going to die cut my pumpkin with. So I have yellow for the base color and then I'm going to cut the other two layers with some orange. You can use any cardstock you want for this. I'm actually using a mix of memory box and craft consortium cardstocks to die cut these pieces. But again, you can use any cardstock you want. After I have my layers cut, I'm gonna poke out any of the little negative places with my place and pierce tool, and I'll start gluing these layers together. I'm using craft tacky glue to attach these down, I'm using little dots in between all the little areas, so that way I make sure everything gets adhered properly. And then I'll start layering these up. I'm going to be working on top of one of the new etc rectangle panels which you see here on the left. This is going to be the base of my project. Everything is going to get layered onto this. We're going to color it with some fun paints and create a really cool background. So I have my pumpkin mostly assembled. I will cut the stems from some brown and then because I want to give this Edison pumpkin a little bit more character, I decided to add some eyes. I'm using vintage Nouveau drops to add a couple of drops inside of his eye areas and that's going to look so cute. I will also use a white gel pen later to add a highlight. All right, let's work on our background while the pumpkin dries. And I'm going to start first by taking the tapestry embossing folder and some white acrylic paint. And I'm going to put this paint on top of the raised surfaces of my folder. I'm going to use this folder like a stamp so that I can stamp this onto my etc. board. I'm using the brayer to help apply that paint onto my embossing folder. And then I'll take this and lay it down on top of the etc. board. Once I have this lined up, I'll carefully then take another brayer and press the design onto the board. This is eventually just going to be a texture. We're gonna cover this with a bunch of other paint. You could skip this step if you want, but I really do like how the little areas of this paint end up showing through from the final project. It's very subtle, but it does make a difference. And I did distress a little bit here and there with some more white paint to use up that paint that's on my brayer. This is going to change the color of the paints that are going on top. Distress paints have a slight transparent feel to them. So when I add this paint on top of my board, it's going to change the color of it because the board itself is dark. I didn't prep this with any sort of mediums to create a white background. I wanted to use that craft color as the base for my board. And so when I add the paint on top, you're getting that transparent effect. And so you have areas that are darker and lighter. And that's where that paint that we use with the tapestry folder comes into play because we're going to get that brighter color to show through when we're layering these paints on top. So I really like to being able to incorporate that onto this background. I think it adds some interest. Again, it's very subtle, but it's just enough to add something to this background. And because I'm creating a pumpkin, I've got mostly blues and browns here, but I did pop in a little bit of orange and green in certain spots to bring in some of those colors that we're gonna add on top with the pumpkin. So once my background paint dried, then I'm going to work on adding some additional layers. I have a Halloween backdrop here from the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection. I've ripped it down so that it's gonna be a base for my pumpkin to sit on. And then I'm going to glue this to the bottom of my etc. board. This is a little bit larger than the board itself, so I'll just trim off any excess once the glue has dried. Then I brought in some paint and I'm gonna distress that board a little bit more. And I'm using a dry brush for this so that way I get those really nice bristles. The bristle strokes are super fun and add a lot of texture to your background. And I especially love it for creating a distressed feel. So now that I have that complete, we're ready to add some paste. I'm using some of the new black texture paste along with the new fractured stencil from Tim Holtz's Halloween Stampers Anonymous and Distress Releases. 
So this is creating a really nice texture in the corners of my project. I'm gonna lift the stencil off after completing the first corner and I'll start adding it in some other areas. And I'm doing it a little bit messily because I want that distressed feel. I don't want this to be 100% perfect. So you're gonna see here, we've got some areas that are skipping and stuff like that. So it creates a little bit more of a worn finish. All right, I'm gonna pull out another die set from Tim Holtz. This is not new, this is one of his other die sets called Paper Cut Cafe. And there are lots of different pieces in here that help you make cute coffee cups. And I thought that the pumpkin spice season vibe that I was going for here worked perfectly by adding some coffee cups. So I die cut them from some cardstock as well. And I'm going to glue all my little cups together to create some really nice elements that I can put with my pumpkin. I used different fall inspired colors. You'll notice I used some nice warm yellows, uh, dusty blues, a rusty red, stuff like that, so that you get a fall vibe with these elements. They're gonna coordinate nicely with all the other colors, and I'm also gonna add some fall leaves too. You, of course, can't forget to add the little coffee inside of each of these cups. Here's those leaves. I die cut them from a mix of cardstock, but also some Halloween backdrops. And that's going to give me some texture on some of these leaves. You can see that fun tapestry pattern and the text. It's going to provide some interest to these elements. Once I've die cut them all, then I can pop them out and I will distress them with a bit of ink before I actually adhere them onto my project, which I think makes them feel a little bit more worn and feel a lot more authentic like a fall leaf. So for this, I used a detail blending brush from Simon Says Stamp, and I used some Tim Holtz Walnut Stain Distress Ink. It's one of my favorite distress inks. And I actually used the same walnut stain to distress all the other pieces that I will be distressing throughout this project. All right, so here's our pumpkin, he's all dry. I found these arms from Tim's popular twig and stump die set. So these arms, I know they're a little skinny, but I think it's kind of funny. They go perfectly with the size of this pumpkin. So I'm just going to glue my coffee cup on top of my pumpkin and then I glued the hands or the stick arms from twig and stump onto my Edison pumpkin. So now you can actually hold the coffee cup, which I think is so funny. I'm gonna glue my elements onto my board here and you can pause this to see exactly where I lined everything up, but I basically just attached a couple of femur pieces on the left corner and then I'm gluing all of my leaves and coffee cups around the pumpkin who's adhered in the center. And to make things really authentic, I added coffee beans from my kitchen into this project. So we really get that nice coffee smell here and it goes well with the pumpkin spice theme, which I think is really fun. Here's where I added some highlights to the pumpkin's eyes after the Nouveau drops had dried. And then we, of course, can't forget to add a little bit of steam to the coffee cup. So I just used some fog cardstock and cut that out with the, one of the steam die cut pieces that come with the Paper Cut Cafe set to create that effect. Okay, so like I said, we're working on pumpkin spice theme and I wanted to be able to spell out the word pumpkin. So I've used this alphanumeric die set from Tim Holtz. I sat there and picked out all the little die cuts that I'm gonna need to spell out the word pumpkin. I'm using the larger size of these die cuts and I cut it from some burnt orange cardstock from Simon's Stamped, a nice warm orange color. And I cut it three times each layer. So that way I have each individual letter able to be stacked on top of each other a total of three times. So that way they're a little bit more dimensional. It feels like a nice thick embellishment. And so I'm using craft tacky glue and some tweezers to help me glue all these elements together. And then once they're dry, I started laying them out on my project to figure out where exactly they're going to end up going. And I wanted to say it's pumpkin season. So here's where we got creative. I pulled out a Christmas sticker set from Tim Holtz and I dug through and I found the words season and also it's. I'm gonna cut them out. And this is really fun because this gives it a really fun and vintage feel to be able to cut out individual pieces and glue them all together. I found a little label here from a Tim Holtz set. I'm going to stick that sticker that says season onto it. I'll distress it a little bit to help it blend into that background. And then I'm gonna cut it down so I can adhere it to my board. Then I also did find the word it's and I'll add that then above the word pumpkin. Attach that down onto my backdrop and then I started distressing the letters. So the letters, again, I used the same blending brush and the walnut stain distress ink. It's gonna give these a worn feel, which I think blends really well with the rest of the project. If I had left them perfect, they would have felt a little out of place. But by adding a little bit of ink to give them that weathered feel, they really blend in nicely. 
Again, from that same sticker book, I found a sticker that had the word it's in it and I just cut that out, trimmed it down so it was nice and small, and then I'm gonna stick that right on top of my backdrop above the word pumpkin. How fun is that? So really creative way to be able to spell out something you're looking for, dig through and find different elements that you can use to create your pieces. All right, and then I just added a fun little flare up at the top corner, and that's gonna complete my pumpkin season backdrop that I made with Tim Holtz products. This is such a cool fall decor piece. You could stick this on an easel and display it for the fall season, which I think is really fun. And I think it also goes to show you how well all of these Tim Holtz Halloween products from Ideology, Stampers Anonymous, Sizzix, and Ranger work together to be able to make such fun projects. I hope you were inspired by this video and what we made today. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And thanks so much for watching. I'll be back soon to share more with you all, but until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.